So let us now see the brainstorming of the poem 2.4 of 11th standard which is upon the Westminster Bridge. So the first question is A1. For preparing questions based on the poem, overall understanding of the poem is must. Discuss with your partner and prepare a set of 5 questions. So the first question for here, example is given me. What is the name of the bridge? Second is, during which time of the day is the poet describing the beauty of the bridge? C1. Which poetic devices are used by the poet? D. How does the poet feel while he enjoys the view? Now this particular question, the E1, the students have to, uh, what do you say, write on their own. You have to find out a question of your own and you have to prove that you have understood the poem. So let us see the next one. So the second one is, earth has not anything to show more fair. This line expresses the poet's feelings. The sight he saw from the bridge is beautiful. There are a few more lines similar to the above. With the help of your partner, find them and discuss what they express. So earth has nothing, anything, uh, sorry, earth has not anything to show more fair. This is what the poet felt. So your answer should be, never did sun more beautifully steep. The poet had never seen anything so beautifully lit up in the morning sun. So this also shows his feelings. Never saw, I never felt a calm so deep. A feeling of eternal peace and eternal bliss was experienced by the poet. He was experienced that thing. So a feeling of eternal peace was felt by the poet as he viewed the morning scene before him on the Westminster Bridge. So while he was moving from that particular bridge, he felt eternal peace. So this should be your answer. So the A to 1 is, choose the correct alternative for the given lines. Focus on the inference. You have to focus on what should be the correct answer. The A1 is, earth has not anything to show more fair. The line means, what does this line means? Is it A, the poet thinks that the place was not good, the poet thinks that there is another place which is more beautiful than this, or C, third one, the poet thinks that there is no place on earth which is as beautiful as this one. So the poet thought that earth has not anything to show more fair, which means the third answer, the poet thinks that there is no place on earth which is as beautiful as this one. So the B question, dull would be of soul who could uh, pass by the line means what does this line mean okay this line means that can w one can walk over the bridge and ignore the surrounding beauty one can halt at the place to enjoy the beauty or anyone with an appreciative mind would not be able to ignore the beauty so the answer to this particular question is that dull would be dull would he be of soul who could pass by so this means that anyone with an appreciative mind would not be able to ignore the beauty he will just see through the beauty so the third one third activity is the poem creates a delightful picture of the city rich in its natural beauty work in pairs and groups and pick out the lines from the poem which give the pictorial effect of the poem write in your own words so pictorial effect means it creates small pictures in your mind okay so the lines are the city now thought like a garment wear the beauty of the morning so the answer to this is that the city of london seems to be clothed by the beautiful morning so the whole city is wearing some kind of clothes which are actually the morning itself ships towers domes theaters and temple lie all the bright and glittering in the smokeless air so meaning of this particular lines or the each pictures created in our mind is that the various structures seem to be shining brightly because of the morning air is not yet polluted by the factories and smoke as we know that the particular bridge was connected two places so one was that place where industrial revolution took place so there was a lot of factories which would uh, let out a lot of smoke which would actually cover these ships towers domes theaters and temples because of its smoke so but that particular day how it seems that the ships the towers the domes the theaters and temples they were all shining brightly and they were glittering because the, uh, the air was smokeless. This is the answer. Never did sun more beautifully steep in his first splendor 
valley, rock or hill. So the answer to this particular thing is that the poet had never experienced such beauty of the valley or rocks or the hills. They were drenched by the light of the rising sun. So because the sun, uh, since there was no smoke in the air, the entire scene was clear. Okay, So everything could be clearly seen and so the sun rays were easily uh, for what is it? They easily were covering all those objects which were coming in its way, such as the valley, the rocks, or the hills. So let us see the next activity, which is A3. Find out the words and phrases which describe the following. One is done for you. For example, sight. For sight, we uh, write touching in its majesty. This is the line from the poem. Then air. Air is smokeless. Next is the river. The river is glided at her own will house seem asleep morning very beautiful and sun in his first splendor so these are your answers so the next one a4 read the line the city now doth like a garment wear the poet imagines that the city is wearing a beautiful garment hence the figure of speech is personification find out more examples of personification from the poem so we have to find out those lines which show personification so the first one is never did the sun more beautifully steep in his first splendor so the sun is personified to be shining more brightly than ever as if he was uh, uh, the sun the particular sun he was controlling his actions okay the next one the river glided at her own will like the river was is personified to be she is also controlling trying to control her speed uh, at her own will she is moving at her own speed as if she is enjoying the beauty of nature and she is moving the third one is and all that mighty heart is lighting uh, lying still all the mighty heart means all the people in the city are asleep next question is to dull would be he uh, of soul who could pass by this line of the poem can be written as rewritten as he would be of dull soul so this particular type of figure of speech is known as inversion find out one more example of inversion from the poem so the example is never did the sun more beautifully steep so the correct order could be the sun never steeped ever so beautifully so this is the rewritten answer of the sentence so the next one is third one the poem is a patrician sonnet so the poem is divided into two parts an octave the first part comprising eight lines and a sestate a second part comprising six lines so the first part of the poem as we have seen has eight lines and the second part has the six lines so read the first four lines of the poem the rhyming scheme is a b b a read the rhyming scheme of the next four lines it is a b b a now read the first three lines of the state and note the rhyme scheme it is c d c the rhyming scheme of the last three lines is d c d so this is the common design of a petrarchian sonnet so this is a petrarchian sonnet so this is the way a petrarchian sonnet sounds like complete the given table by giving examples from the poem now we have to give the examples for example the features the various features are the object used example and the lines examples are the earth sun ship towers temples theater domes and fields these are the example of the objects which are used in this particular poem next is the praise or the blames so fair earth and dull souls so these are the praise and the blames used so the metaphor used the very houses seem asleep this is the metaphor similarly the city now doth like a garment wear the beauty of the man morning this is the simile which is used personification the rivers glide that at her own will so number of lines 14 which is an example of a petrarchian sonnet so the rhyming scheme is octave a b b a a b b a and is a state which is c d c d c d so let us see the a5 third one write an appreciation of the sonnet refer to the earlier poems for the points to be covered for the appreciation so in this particular thing the first is the title the title of the poem is upon westminster bridge which is accurate as the poet wants us to appreciate the beauty of the bridge he also he also intertwines man's relation with nature as one so at that particular time in the morning he found the bridge man made bridge was very beautiful 
as it is a part of the nature herself okay so he has intertwined man's relation with the nature as one so the poet william wordsworth is a renowned and major english poet he has won the prestigious poet laureate by the queen victoria her highness she had presented this particular prestigious poet laureate to him in united kingdom in her court he is a leading english romantic poet romantic here means the one who writes nature poems okay natural poems the theme the poem upon westminster bridge is an appreciation of the westminster bridge situated in london the poem appreciates the scenic morning beauty of the bridge while he and his sister were traveling across it so this particular poem is a natural poem it is appreciation of that particular object in the morning so next is the poetic style see here style language poetic device used in the poem the poem is written in the form of a petrarchan sonnet which consists of 14 lines in the form of an octave and sestet the rhyming scheme of the poem is a b b a a b b a c d c d c d so it is actually here it should be c d c d c d so the answer to this is a b b a a b b a c d c d c d there are a number of poetic devices such as simile the city now thought like a garment where the beauty of the morning so here the word uh, simile is used here which shows so here there is a comparison of c the city now thought like a garment so the city is actually covered or it is surrounded by the scenic beauty of the morning but it is like a garment so the beauty of the morning is compared to a garment like the city herself is wearing a garment of beauty next is metaphor the very houses seem asleep means the people in the houses are asleep personification i never first one it is actually never did the sun more beautifully steep in his first splendor so this is the personification as the sun was actually shining very brightly as if he was uh, what do you say controlling over his actions answer to for inversion is never did sun more beautifully steep the answer to this is the sun never steeped so beautifully so let us see the next one which is the special feature the poem is a petrarchan sonnet composed in the form of an octave and sestet that are eight and six lines are composed together to form a petrarchan sonnet which makes a 14 line poem next is the message the values or the morals in the poem so one must be generous and kind and always appreciate the beauty of nature whether man uh, has learned to make a number of things but he, he can never uh, compare or he can never compete with the beauty of nature this is what the poet wanted to tell us even the westminster bridge is a man made object but when it was completely blended in with the nature it was so beautiful like it felt that it was a part of nature herself so next is your opinion about the poem so i like the theme of the poem it gave me a beautiful message to appreciate the beauty of nature so one must learn to enjoy the beautiful and the mesmerizing beauty of nature so this is my opinion